Hey everybody, Mark from Team Chronotech here bringing you a how-to video series. This how-to video series is going to go over how to migrate a domain controller that's currently running Windows Server 2012 R2 to Windows Server 2019. So let's dive right into it here. I have built a Hyper-V environment on my local computer that I actually used the video that Chronotech from our team put together. I will link that video in the description so if you guys like to see how to do this you can do so. I have my current DC, my 2012 R2 DC right here, and my new one um, that is not a DC yet, but we will go through the steps here in just a moment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Windows Server 2019 server right here. So as you can see, it's pretty similar to um, some of the other server versions from 2012 and all the way through. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the Manage section here. We're going to want to go ahead and add roles and features. I want to click next. We're going to want to add a role based or feature based installation. We'll click next. It's just going to ask us which uh, server we're going to do it on. We're going to do it on the one that we're currently on right now. Click next. And here's where we're going to want to select which features we want. Um, now, my domain controller is currently acting as a DNS uh, server and a GCP server, so we're also going to want to do that. Um, but also, the main uh, main part here is the Active Directory Domain Services. So we're going to check that one first. It's going to tell us all these features that it's going to need to install as well. So we're going to click Add Features. Scroll down here. We're going to go to DHCP Server. We'll click Add Features. It's kind of giving us a, a little warning here that it doesn't have a static IP address. I'm not going to worry about that because that I'm going to do later in my own time. I'm going to go ahead and click Continue. We're going to add DNS Server. Click Add Features. Same warning, um, currently it's got a, a dynamic IP. We'll change that later on in a later video. Click Continue. So just double check, we have Active Directory Domain Services, DHCP Server, DNS Server checked. Those are the three ones that I'll need checked here to get this Server 2019 over to a domain controller. Here it's showing all the features that needed to be added that automatically clicked when we um, did the adding of the role there. So we'll go ahead and click next here. And click next on this window. Next here. And next on this one. If you guys like, there is some information there that you can read over kind of about what you're installing and, and all the features. Um, so here's just kind of an overview uh, again of confirming the tools and everything that's going to be installed. We're going to go ahead and click install. And it's going to start that process. So at this point, I'm going to pause the video because it's going to take some time to complete. All right, so we have all of the roles and features now installed for a domain controller. We have, we see here, we have Active Directory, Domain Services, DHCP Server, and DNS Server. Um, it's telling us here additional steps are required to make this machine a domain controller. We need to promote this server to a domain controller. Because uh, currently right now it just has those features installed. We actually need to promote it to a domain controller. So everything looks good here. So I'm going to go ahead and click close. All right, now that that is finished, we see we have our three new roles and server groups created here. We have ADDS, which is Active Directory Domain Services, DHCP, and DNS. Before we move forward, um, we do need to promote this to a uh, domain controller. Uh, but before we move forward, we want to double check something, make sure that our server is currently pointing to our existing domain controller for DNS because that existing domain controller is acting as our DNS server. Um, that's very important because when we go to promote this to a domain controller and if it's not pointing to the existing domain controller for DNS, it won't be able to find that domain. Uh, so to do so, you want to go down here in the bottom right hand corner on the network settings and click network and internet settings. Click the ethernet section click change adapter options, right click here, properties, IPv4, properties there. I've already gone ahead and, and entered in the IP address for the DNS server, which is that existing 2012 R2 uh, domain controller. So that is checked, everything is good. So we are good to move forward with promoting this to a domain controller. I'm gonna close everything out here. And in the top right, we have a little notification, and this says promote this server to a domain controller. Um, we're going to click that, and what we're going to want to select here is add domain controller to an existing domain. 
We're going to want to enter in our domain. This is just my test domain that I set up. Hit select. And here we're going to want to enter in um, our domain uh, name with a slash and an administrator account that will give us permissions to join the domain because currently this computer is not or the server is not on the domain. So if we went in and entered in a username, it's not going to know where to pull that username from. It's actually going to pull it locally and it will fail. Click OK. And perfect, we now see our domain in the list here. We're gonna select the domain, click OK. Everything looks good here. It's pointing to our uh, domain for the user account. Gonna click Next. It's gonna ask us a couple options here. Um, is this gonna be, an S be a DNS server? Yes, it will. Will it be a global catalog? Yes, it will. Um, it's not gonna be a read-only domain controller. That means it's a domain controller that can only see um, you know, basically just read the the settings of the domain, read the Active Directory, not be able to make any changes. Um, right here we're going to type in a directory services restore mode password. Um, make sure you remember this password. I'm going to go ahead and just enter one here. And we will click next. A delegate for this server cannot be created because the authorization parent zone cannot be found. Um, We'll go ahead and worry about this later. We're going to click next. And we're going to want to replicate. It says from any domain controller. That's okay because we only have one here. If you say had you know five or six domain controllers and one of them was the primary domain controller, you'd want to go ahead and replicate from that one. We'll click next. Everything else looks good here. We're gonna to wanna to keep all these um, locations for sysfall, uh, NTDS, all of that, um, this, the default locations. And it's gonna do a couple of checks here. We'll leave all this to default, we'll click next. And it's doing a prerequisite check. This is gonna go through the system, make sure everything's good to go for permitting to a domain controller. If there's anything that's out of the ordinary or cannot happen, it'll let us know. So right here it says all prerequisite checks pass successfully. Uh, click install to begin, which is great. There are a couple of notifications. I believe some of these have to do um, with the delegate, which we will take care of later. And we will go ahead and click next here. Or I'm sorry, we'll go ahead and click install here. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit. It's going to go through a couple of processes. So I'm going to close, uh, I'm going to pause the video. We'll get back into it here when it's back, when it's done. All right, so after that installation, it did a reboot and joined us to the domain. So you can see here, we are now joined to the, uh, to the Dime domain. That is my test domain. And we are going to go ahead and log in and take a look at our services. I'm going to log in with the administrative account. Awesome, so we can see here, we'll look at the little notification. We no longer have that promote to domain controller notification. Uh, and as a verification, we're gonna go over here to tools. We're gonna go and open up Active Directory users and computers. And we'll see here, we are joined to the Dime domain. I did create a test account on my 2012 box. And I see that that test account is replicating over nicely to the 2019. So, all right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna go over how to uh, transfer over the FISMO rules. What are the FISMO rules? Why are they important? Um, so stay tuned and hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.